NHADCH 14.1 The Hero's Long Absence, Middle Part. Spring break has arrived. Starting today, I will have three weeks off from school. The twin brothers Jade and Jane left for their relative's villa. It's right by a famous and beautiful lake, the surface of which is as clear as a mirror. Snay also went away for vacation. Currently, he's at his grandmother's estate at the outskirts of town, where vineyards are abound. Those three have invited me to stay with them, but I refused. I have a lot of things waiting for me to do. Once I bid them a good holiday and tried to send them away, they burst into tears, saying things like, not being able to meet you for three weeks is unthinkable. Once they were finally leaving the village, they kept looking back at me. Why were they crying though? It's not like this was our final farewell. It's only three weeks. I'm sure that it will pass in a blink of an eye. Before I realize it, the vacation will be over. Since I'm taking the role of Leanne, I have to accompany Leanne's elder brother on a business trip to the neighboring territory's town hall. It'll last for four days. The purpose of the trip is to fulfill my father's duty as a feudal lord. Then, Leanne's grandfather, who lives in a town Closeby, asked us to stay a few days there, okay, scratch that. Since he already said it, then it's less of an invite and more of an order. Other than this, I still have to make the demon alarms, figure out where to place them, make the hazard map, and create an evacuation route. Once I finish the map, I plan to send copies to all the villages. If I tell Leon's father that this will make him look like a good feudal lord, and increase his appeal to the higher-ups, then he will gladly lend me a hand without a doubt. So, yeah, I'm busy. Terribly so. Even though it is spring break, I have no free time and no breaks. As I jot down my checklist in my room, the sunlight streaming through my window grew stronger. I glance outside. The leaves from the trees outside are starting to turn a darker green. Up above, blue skies stretch on and on. An occasional soft breeze rolls in, it feels pleasant. A day like this is perfect for, tn content equals, starting on a trip, I randomly search the meaning of this word in dictionary, so I thought I will share, 3. Luli Su. 1. To start on a journey, to depart, to embark. 2. To die, to pass away, to depart this life. You're welcome, tn. Alfred should be on his trip with Cheddar San and his wife already, right. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. One week has passed since the spring break began. Today, Leon's parents have gone to the capital city, and will not return for five to six days. Leon's brother, as the acting feudal lord, is in charge of filling the documents, completing routine duties and house-sitting for his father. Currently, he should be in his father's study doing his morning paperwork, under the watchful eye of the capable butler Loendel. I rather not, but I have to greet him a few times during this break. Anyway, whenever I go out, I have to inform Leon's brother first, which is very bothersome. He's super nosy, shooting question after question at me and chasing me here and there. That's why I'll just quickly inform him of where I'm going before sprinting off. Since I already informed Loendel of my schedule, there shouldn't be any problem. I knock at the door to the study. Loendel's calming and refined voice greets me from within. It's Leanne. There are suddenly a clamor inside. After that, the sound of something rattling and continuously falling on the floor reverberates. What is it? It's noisy. What's going on there? So it's Leanne. Please come inside. After a clink, the door slowly opens from my push. Loendel bows gracefully with his usual calm smile, and he positions his hands clad in spotless white gloves in front of his chest. Ah, my Leanne. Leon's brother leans over to the large desk, his face appearing from between the mountains of the overflowing documents. That, looks like it will be hard to organize. I look at Loendel. He's smiling, but there are veins pulsing from his forehead, uh. I totally understand how he feels. You've worked hard. And also, thank you very much. Leon's elder brother tries to push the documents aside without any care, and he leans forward in excitement. As if asking for my help, he stretches both of his arms towards me. I'm glad that there's a large desk between us. Leanne. Oh, my cute Leanne. He inhales and exhales hard. Today, you're all so beautiful, cute, and sweet, ah, that dignified yet ephemeral figure, you look like a beautiful moonlight fairy basking in the glow of the moon, I want to be on your side all day, no, all night. And love you until the end of time. The usual antics again. I can't understand what he is saying. What's wrong? My beloved Leanne. Are you perhaps lonely? It's okay, come here. 
I will prepare a chair next to me, so. No, thank you. Uh, then, I'll be heading out soon. Loendal, I'll leave it to you then. Yes, I understand, Lian Sama. Please take care on your way. I have ordered two guards to follow you. They'll be trailing a little behind, so that they won't disturb you. Please feel free to instruct them if necessary. Since I'm always careful and having guards around make it hard for me to move freely, I tell Loendal that I don't need any. But he suddenly bursts into tears and tells me that if I travel alone he'll be worried, and if he's worried he might get a heart attack. That he's afraid any more stress is bad for his health. But I'm sure that's not true. Because I often see him muscle training in the garden before the crack of dawn. Thank you, Loendal. I'll probably be coming back late at night, but I'll definitely come home. Ah, I won't be needing dinner, since I'll eat it outside. Yes, I understand. Please be careful. A. Eush. L. Lian. W. Where are you going? Lian Sama is heading west of the village for an inspection. Eush. T. Then. I. I will. I will go together with him. You won't. Roberto Sama has many tasks waiting for you to do. Now, may I ask you to confirm this document, please? Since this is regarding an urgent matter, please process it before the afternoon. Finished speaking, Loendel lifts another mountain of papers from a Closeby cart and places it on the desk in front of Leon's brother. He maintains his calm smile throughout. The stack of papers was enough to block anyone's line of sight completely. Ah, on the other side of the pile, Leon's brother weeps. As always, thank you Loendel. Let's go for a cup of tea next time. Of course it will be my treat. Then, I'll be off big brother and Loendel. I close the door to the study and rush out of the front gate where Shurio is waiting. After driving around in the carriage, I have Shurio pull the horses to a stop on a hill near the west side of the village. Then I start to sketch the map using a compass and measuring instrument. Before my eyes is a peaceful rural landscape. Just beyond is a dense and large forest. And past that, a mountain. It's a scenery that inspires feelings of being homesick within me. Shorio covers his face with his hat, snoring comfortably outside the carriage. Sitting on the hill, I sketch the roads and trees using the 24 colored pencils I bought previously. Since I have to place the demon alarms in the most beneficial locations, I need to predict the pathing of the demons as well as I can. Ah, are you by any chance, Lian Sama? Yes. I flip around after I hear someone calling my name. At the end of the road by the foot of the hill, a woman stands with her baby suspended on her chest. In her hands are baskets of vegetables and towels. She's walking toward me. She looks unfamiliar. You are. Ah. I I'm very sorry. I can't believe I just call out to you without telling you who I am. I I'm. Who are you? Ah. Yes. I I'm. A. U H M. I'm Pierre Malotte's grandchild. Pierre. The name rings a bell. Ah. I say, without realizing it. I quickly close my mouth. I know who that is. NHADCH 14.2. Author's warning, there's a bit of a dark scene near the end of the chapter. Please read with caution if necessary. Every Saturday noon, this person named Pierre will visit the church to pray to the goddess. He's an old man with tan skin, eyes more narrow than Marie's. During each visit, he'll bring ready-to-eat vegetables as snacks for the kids. Tomatoes, sweet vegetables, and even the occasional fruit. He has also given some to me a few times. He is always smiling happily every time he comes to the church. His head is a little out of it, he wrongly calls Marie with Maru. He wrongly calls me, Angel Sama, too. Although I correct him over and over again, he never fixes it. I haven't seen him around recently, though. Uh, Grandpa always, mentioned an angel with beautiful silver hair that is very kind to him, well, if we're talking about people with beautiful silver hair in this village, only the Owen family comes to mind, but I don't think it's actually, them, ah. The woman panics, looking up at me with a slightly frightened expression. Pierre's grandchild, huh. Now that she mentions it, he did tell me he had a grandchild. He gives me a different name every time though. So you're Pierre Sans' grandchild. The woman's face brightens, and she nods several times. Why yes. Do you know him? Only his name. I is that so. I lied to her. I have met with old man Pierre Sand several times. But if I tell her that, she will know that I hang around the church. That'll be bad if my family finds out. I need to lower the possibility that Leon's father will learn about my lie as much as I can. I must be cautious. 
Old man Pierre Sand's grandchild sticks by glued to the spot as if she were lost. It looks like she still has something to say to me. I wonder what. Maybe, something happened to old Pierre Sand. Is there something else you want to tell me? Why yes. Uh, uh, my grandfather, is sick. A. Hey. He is sick, so he's bedridden. In the past he used to be able to live alone, but now I have to take care of him. And. Sick. That's why he doesn't come to the church anymore, huh? The doctor said that with his age and physical strength, it will be difficult for him to recover. Is that so? Since I was already prepared, it's okay. My grandfather is now 97 years old. I think, he has lived long enough. He himself also said so while laughing, so I can accept it, so. She twiddles her fingers nervously. What is it? So, grandpa said something interesting. Since he hasn't been going to church these days, he wonders if Angel Sama is angry, that's what he said while looking sad. A, hey, that. The woman looks at me, still playing with her fingers, her expression that of someone who held not much hope. Ah, that. I know that Lian Sama is very busy. B, but, I hope you can visit my grandpa even if it's only a glance, please, can you meet my grandfather? But, I'm not the angel that Pierre San is talking about. Yes. Yes, I know that. But now, there's only one person that has beautiful silver hair here. And it's you, Lian Sama. Even if you aren't the same person, it's okay, if you tell him that you've come to see him, he will surely feel relieved. Even if I'm not the same person. My grandpa, who was bedridden at the hospital, had called me by his daughter's name in his final moments. The nurse told me to always accompany him, that way, he'll feel relieved. So I continued to reply as his daughter, as my mother. And I stayed with him until the end. The end. I see. It's the end for him, right. Ah, uh, Lian Sama. If it's only a look, then. T thank you very much. After I reach her house, I see the old and bedridden Pierre San. With a horribly thin body. Grandpa, Angel Sama has come to see you. The old man opens his eyes slightly. As soon as he catches sight of me, a bright smile appears on his face. Oh, oh, Angel Sama, isn't this Angel Sama? Ah, oh, I never thought that, you will come to this kind of place, I'm very happy, that you have come here to see me, thank you very much. He stretches his arms, which are as thin as twigs. I grab his hand. Like my grandfather, his hand has pretty much become skin and bones. Angel Sama, Angel Sama. Since I'm stuck in bed now, I can't go to the church anymore, I'm very sorry. No, it's all right. You don't have to worry so much. B but, didn't you often come to the church in the past? It's already enough. I is that so? Yeah, that's right. As I smile, old Pierre Sand's previously anxious and pale face is now tinged with a bit of red. Uh, how have the children been? They are as energetic as always. Is that so? He he, I'm glad. Ah, at this kind of time, some of the orange trees in my field should have already bore fruit. Please, take as much as you like. I can't bring them to you anymore, and I feel very miserable, but. Old Pierre San starts coughing, so I nervously support his back and pat his back. Coughing while lying down isn't good for the health. It's not good for the stomach and he can choke on his saliva if he's not careful. The best position for coughing is facing sideways. That's what the nurse told me back when my grandfather had been hospitalized. As I try to nudge his body to turn sideways, old Pierre San furrows a brow and waves his thin hand. Ah, he coughs. You, you don't have to do that. It's better to face sideways when coughing. Slowly, calm down and take a breath, yes, like that. Even if you don't get up, it's okay. Thank you very much, ah, Angel Sama is really, really kind. No, I'm not. Old Pierre San narrowed his already narrow eyes, and he looks up at me. That's right, there's also vegetables in my field, please take them too. I understand. Then, I'll receive them gratefully. Yes, certainly. This year's weather is great, and the vegetables are very sweet, I'm sure that they will be delicious, please try them out. If it is suitable for Angel Sama's taste, I'll be happy, but... Don't worry. All the vegetables and fruits that you previously brought to the church tasted very sweet and delicious. Old Pierre San smiled, cheeks flushing. He seems really happy. Ah, is that so? I'm glad, thank you very much, for making me this happy, Angel Sama. With each pat of the back, his coughs grow calmer and calmer. Old Pierre San looks comfortable and begins nodding off. 
I should let him rest now, right? When I slowly remove my hand, old Pierre San mutters, ah, if I, can go, to the church again, I want to go, and then, have a chat again, with everyone, an angel Sama. Pierre San. Back then, my grandpa had always told me he wanted to go home. I'd answer by saying it was okay, that he'd get better soon. That he should take a rest so he'd be able to go home tomorrow. Like how I did in my previous world, I crouch beside Pierre San and gently hold his thin hand with both hands. And just like before, I put a smile on my face. And I say the same thing I said in the past to my grandpa. It's okay. You will surely, become better soon. That's why, please rest your body now, when you're healthy again. Please come to the church again. Yes. Ah, of course, of course I will, since I will be coming again. Please wait for me, Angel Sama, thank you very much. Old Pierre San closed his eyes and fell into a peaceful slumber, probably due to his exhaustion. His face looks very happy and peaceful. The woman approaches me and bows several times. Thank you very much, Lian Sama, ah, you're really, really the one my grandfather was talking about, very, very kind. Rising to my feet, I shake my head. No, I'm not kind. I'm not kind at all, despite my actions right now, I'm actually a cruel and unfair person. I keep lying to people. I'm, a bad person who keeps lying, a big fat liar. Hey, well, since I'm busy, it's time for me to head back. Why yes, T thank you, very much. I exit through the front door, leaving behind the puzzled woman. Shurio, who was waiting outside, glances at me. For some reason, he frowns slightly. Young master, what happened? The color of your face is. It's nothing. Since I have other business to attend to, let's go. Bring out the carriage. Oh, all right. Even though I'm tired from moving around all day, I can't fall asleep. Since it can't be helped, I use this time to sort out my notes from the morning. It has been 10 days since the spring break started. The next time I visit the church, I see Pierre San's grandchild. She was wearing all black. Looks like she has something to say to Marie. Catching sight of me, the woman bows and flashes me a tired little smile. I'm still able to discern a bit of happiness from it though. Lian Sama, thank you very much for the previous day. Thanks to you, Grandpa has went to heaven peacefully. Is that so? Marie looks at my expression, and frowns a little. Lian Sama, what happened? Your face is, it's end nothing. I'm all right, really. If you're tired, please take a rest. Yes, I'll do as you say. As I pass through the chapel toward my private research and development room, I hear the woman mentioning that there had been several people buried on this same day. Marie answers by saying that spring is the season of the beginning and the end. Ah, is that true? Somehow, I got to understand this perfectly after experiencing something cruel. Speaking of which, my father and mother also died in an accident at the spring. Not only that, both my grandpa, who took me in after and played with me even when he was tired, and my Shiba Sander died on my first day of high school. And now, old Pierre San died. Marie will also, die someday too. I wonder if it'll be spring then too. I have a feeling that might happen. The image of a certain someone with golden locks flashes through my mind. I quickly push away those thoughts. That guy is still okay. He's alive and will return after two weeks. That's what he told me before he left, he will definitely come back. Ah, but, in the past, my parents had also told me they would return from the trip soon, and would bring me a lot of souvenirs. Spring, I don't like this season very much. It took away the people closest to me, every time.